Hi, and welcome to Untethered with Jen Liss, the podcast that's here to help you free yourself from the crap that's holding you back so you can claim the life you're meant to live. I'm your host, Jen, and in this episode, we are going to talk about freeing yourself from the weight of other people's expectations. Let's go. Hey there, it's Jen. Welcome back to the podcast. Did you watch the season finale of Ted Lasso? The show finale, the finale finale of Ted Lasso. Oh my gosh, I'm so sad. I'm so sad. I'm physically sad about this show being over, which is kind of funny because my husband and I waited until for every time we waited until all the episodes were out and then we watch them in the evening, like multiple times a week until we're caught up. And we just caught up for the very last episode the night before. So tonight we get to watch the finale, but I almost don't want to. Does Do you have trouble ending things? Anyone else? I don't want things to end. There have been multiple shows that I have watched, Dexter being one of them, True Blood being another, <laughs> many, many shows that I have watched where I avoided watching the final episode. I I can't bring myself to do it. Like I don't want things to be over. I just don't want it to end. <laughs> Such a good show. The creativity, the writing, everything about the show. And I think a lot of us have such a dear connection to the characters because it got us through the pandemic. Like it was one of those shows, those heartwarming shows. And if you're not a Ted Lasso fan, totally okay. I promise I'm going to get to the point of this episode, but it was just one of those shows that got us all through this really tough time. And having it end is really gut wrenching. I'm genuinely so sad about it. I'm like, I'm getting emotional right now <laughs> just talking about it. I'm just so sad for these characters to go away. You know how when you get to the end, of a book and you're like, I always have a hangover of a good fiction series that I've read, you know, say there's three to six books in the series. When I get to the end of that fiction series, I have a hangover. I feel like I went through a breakup. Like there's no more of these characters and I'm almost get a little mad at the author for not writing more. <laughs> Does anybody feel me on this? Does this happen to you? <laughs> So the weight of my expectation on these writers is very heavy and they need to be writing more and more episodes of Ted Lasso and more books. <laughs> nice segue into what today's Thursday thread is about. Actually, we've got a Thursday thread number that I would love to drop right here for you to listen from a spectacular listener who sent this in. Here is our Thursday thread jingle of the day. Let's go. Thursday thread. It's a Thursday. I would like to say a huge thank you to the amazing Sammy Flick, who has sent in that beautiful jingle that she created just for us. Thanks for introducing today's Thursday thread. <laughs> so in Tuesday's episode, solo episode, I answered my own question that I ask to every podcast guest who comes on this show, where do you see the magic in the world? And what I shared is that the magic in the world is in every single one of us. Every single one of us has so much creativity and magic inside of us that is just begging to come out. That is like, we are creators. We are here to help that magic be ushered into the world and to create a better place, to have a magical, mystical, amazing experience on this world. That's what we're all here to do from my perspective. <laughs> but so many of us aren't doing it. We're not doing it. We're held back. We're not ushering our magic out in the most beautiful, magnificent, flowing, cool, creative, Ted Lasso style way. One of the things that I love in Ted Lasso is this message that has threaded through the entire series, which is to believe, to believe, to believe in yourself and that belief in yourself creates belief in each other. And it's so important that we believe that there's so many things getting in the way of us believing in our gifts and then turning around and creating 
amazing strategies and goals and winning the entire season, right? Which I don't even know what's going to happen at the time of recording this podcast (laughs) in the season finale of Ted Lasso. But that's what we want, right? That's what we desire. We want to just have this amazing, cool experience. And there's things that get in the way. And that's what in this podcast, this is from my perspective, those are tethers. We are tethered to this life that is not the life we're meant to live. We're stuck. We're bound by these things. And one of the biggest tethers that holds so many of us back, and it's why this podcast exists, because I fully have felt this one. I still feel this one. Everybody feels this one is the weight of other people's expectations, living according to other people's expectations. There was a, she still exists, there wasn't, there is a nurse by the name of Bronnie Ware. If you haven't heard of Bronnie Ware, she wrote a book called The Top Five Regrets of the Dying. Now, Bronnie is an Australian nurse who spent many years working in palliative care, which is caring for patients in their final 12 weeks of life. Now, she was having conversations with these individuals, and what she started to notice is that so many of them were having these like dying epiphanies, these moments at the end of their life, and they would eventually become regrets. They would share like, oh, I wish that I had and you know they're in those final moments and so many of them weren't reflecting on a wonderful life but were reflecting on the things that they had wished that they had done and so she ended up she started a blog actually recording these things just these noticings that she had ended up being a book best selling book so worth a read or it's actually a great one to listen to if you're into audiobooks but do you know what that number one regret was of all of these people that she talked to, and then she whittled it down to five, and the number one regret. I wish I'd had the courage to live a life true to myself, not the life others expected of me. And these are Bronnie's words herself. This was the most common regret of all. When people realize that their life is almost over and look back clearly on it, it's easy to see how many dreams have gone unfulfilled. Most people had not honored even half of their dreams and had to die knowing that it was due to choices they had made or not made. That's some heavy stuff (laughs) when we think about the dreams that we have on our hearts. Somebody who is faced with death, who is looking death in the eye, it suddenly becomes so apparent to them that they're not living the life that they're really, truly called, their most joyful, most aligned, most magnificent life that they could be living. And they suddenly see the choices that they could have made. We can all be seeing this every day. We don't have to be facing death to come to this realization. Like I'm here to tell you right now, (laughs) this realization should be here for you. Like, look at your life. Are there choices that you're making based on what others are expecting of you and not what you really want to do? When I look at some of my life decisions, like when I left, I always go back to this one because it's so dang powerful. When I left doing hair, there was so much weight of expectation on me. I mean, if I had really like sat and I did actually sat and think about all of the people who desired for me to continue doing hair, I, I it was heavy. It was heavy. Like they had high expectations. They wanted me to be doing it. I was good at it. It was, you know, it was it was great. We had a deal. <laughs> we had a relationship. We had lots of tethers <laughs> going on. And a lot of those were by choice. They were things that I had chosen. I I loved these people. But I felt a calling for something different. I felt a calling for something more. I knew that there were other experiences for me in this life, which have led me to right here, right now, doing this podcast. I would not be doing this podcast if I had stayed in that career and had lived according to the expectations of my family, of many of my friends whose hair I did, of all of my clients, of just like 
anybody who had given me support in this career that I had done, like the salon that I worked for, all of my coworkers, so many things, right? But I knew in my soul, in my heart, in my gut, that I was being called to something different. And this might be you too. And maybe you already know that and you're already taking strides and you're already taking steps and you're also still feeling (laughs) the weight of other people's expectations. And it's normal. It's normal. We all feel it. And there's a reason for that, right? We feel the weight of other people's expectations because at the base of it, at the root of you being a human being, of me being a human being, of all of us is love. Love. That's the number one thing that every single one of us craves, desires, needs. We have to be loved. We we will die without love, without the support of each other, or we would have back when there were saber-toothed tigers, right? We needed belonging. We we need each other. We really do for our mental health. We need community. We need each other. And therefore, like we need love, belonging. We have to have those things. We feel like we're dying without it. We are unbalanced without that. We need it. So when we start to rock that ship of expectations, there's a lot of expectations put on us when it comes to love. And some of those things are there unnecessarily, or they're not actually there, but we think they're there. There's a lot of invisible tethers <laughs> that are happening in our relationships. So when we can step back and get more intentional about our relationships, I will say for me, one of the things, a choice that we made to move across the country, I have to physically be more intentional about my relationships. You know, I grew up in Kansas, Wichita is not like a tiny town, but pretty small town. You know, like we all knew each other. My family gets together every single Sunday. Like we see each other. There is an expectation for sure. I love my family through and through, by the way, but there's expectation that that's how you're going to show up. So much expectation that is built into that. Well, I left. (laughs) I moved 1,500 miles away. So now if I talk to my mom, it's not just that I'm expected to see her on Sunday. I have to intentionally reach out to my mom. I have to call her. I I have to actually do the intended thing. And in some ways, it has helped me. (laughs) It has helped me a lot. Like, Moving away was incredibly hard. It was a huge decision, much like doing leaving hair and going into a new career. This is massive, really scary, really like it felt impossible because there was so much expectation that I was going to stay and live there and be around my nieces as they grow up, you know, and not just be seeing them a few times a year as I am now. It's not easy to make those decisions. And if any of you have moved away, or have changed careers, like made some big decision that impacted yourself and a lot of other people, like you know this. It's It can be really hard. At the same time, there's some amazing benefits that come along with it. And we can't deny those. The fact that it's like, now I am spending, when I spend quality time with my friends who come up here to Portland, or when I go home and I make that quality time with my family, with my friends, it's special. I'm making in, making sure that it's special. And we can all be doing this in our relationships. It makes me step back and think, wow, there's just so much. Like We just put these expectations on each other in this weird way. It's like sometimes you just have to like sever it. <laughs> And the question that's with me, and this is really just a question that I'm throwing out there just to consider is, can we do this without making massive, bold moves? Do we need the massive, bold move in order for us to rethink things, in order for us to step back and be intentional? And I think we can. We can. I was reading a book that it was at the very beginning of my self development journey years ago i was reading a book and i can't remember what it was called but the title had the f bomb in it 
And she said that she set things that she did and did not do. And one of the things that she doesn't do is go to baby showers. She just doesn't do it. So there's no expectation for her. She has no guilt, no worry, no nothing around when somebody invites her to a baby shower. She just sends a gift and she says, I'm not coming. (laughs) And how freeing is that? How freeing to just be like, I don't do that. I don't do that. And so when we know the things that we value, that we love, and we set up our lives according to that, then it's easy. So look at your life and consider some of these things because when we're tethered, here's some signs of a tether. (laughs) And here's some signs in particular of the tether of other people's expectations and being under the weight of other people's expectation, feeling guilt, guilt, and maybe you don't even know why you're just feeling guilty, feeling worry, feeling some shame around if I, if I don't go, what are they going to think of me? And then if you don't go and then you spend the whole day worrying about what everybody might be saying about you, (laughs) feeling wishy-washy about the decision, about any decision, feeling like I'm not sure. All of those things are signs of a tether, worrying about what other people think, feeling responsible for the feelings of others. So some of these things um, are highly rooted in codependency, uh, but you know, feeling like you need the approval of somebody else. (laughs) And so that's why you're showing up. (laughs) All of these things keep us from making decisions that are truly aligned for us. And I think it really benefits me and it has helped me a ton in realizing that when I make a decision for myself, when you say a yes for yourself, and Josie Whitman said this when she was on the podcast, when you say a yes for yourself, you are making room for someone else to say a yes for themselves. But if you keep these tethers and you feel this like guilt, this expectation guilt, this expectation worry, fear, all of these things around it, just imagine that the two of you are like rubber banded together and you're just like pulling each other back and forth. And it's like, how can anyone make a sound decision? How can anyone have their own feelings when they're like bouncing around with each other in this like weird rubber band. (laughs) I don't know why that's the visual that came to mind. Whereas if you just cut those, you both are free to look around and say, oh, no, this is, this is what I care about. This is what I don't care about. And then you can have an honest conversation about it rather than, you know, it's like, you know, when you don't want to go to a party And then you're like, oh, well, you know, it's been a long week or and you start coming up with things. And then other people are like, oh, but, you know, it's okay. We've got all the snacks for you. And they're like each other, like there's this like back and forth that's happening when it's just like, just say, I don't want to come. I don't feel like coming. (laughs) There's nothing wrong with that. There is absolutely nothing wrong with just saying, actually, that doesn't sound great to me. It doesn't feel great to me. Try it. Please try this because telling somebody that you don't want to do something and just like holding your ground in it and not making excuses about it and not over explaining feels so good. And it actually feels good for the other person too. Maybe there's like this initial hit of like, oh, dang, I did really want them to come. But people come to eventually see that that was actually the kindest thing for you to do. There's Now I'll get into my nuance between niceness and kindness. Niceness is so bound (laughs) in tethers. Being nice is not being kind. Being kind is being honest, is being genuine, is being authentic. And I'm not going to pretend that I haven't been nice plenty of times in my life and continue to still do it. Girl, I'm I'm Midwestern at heart. <laughs> Definitely happens. But I really try to be kinder than nice. I had a beautiful example of this who worked beside me in a salon for many years. She would tell her clients the truth. 
no matter what, no matter what. She had this client who sometimes would come in and say inappropriate things, not meaning to. It was like an older woman and she didn't know what she was saying, that she was saying something that was inappropriate. But she would say, hey, Dottie, her name wasn't Dottie, but that's such a cute name. Dottie, you can't say that because like she would say this to her clients and she would tell them everything that they needed to hear, not just personally, but also with their hair. I'm like, that is kind. That is kind of her. And she would say, that makes me uncomfortable to people too. And so she's being kind to herself. So when we release our codependency and our fear of what other people are going to think. Like you are not responsible for the feelings of other people. I'm just going to say that again. You are not responsible for the feelings of other people. And nobody else is responsible for your feelings. We are responsible for our own circle of feelings. The feelings that happen inside of your body, you are responsible for. The feelings that happen inside your dad's body, he is responsible for your husband, your wife, your partner, your dog. <laughs> I don't know. Dogs are a little bit codependent. <laughs> we are all happier when we are dependent on our own feelings and not on other people. So getting out from the weight of other people's expectations actually doesn't have anything to do with the other person. It actually has everything to do with you, with me, with us, e each of us. That's how you get out from the weight of other people's expectations is by living up to your own personal expectations of yourself, listening to yourself, trusting yourself, getting quiet with yourself improving your self-esteem, loving yourself, believing in yourself, your gifts, and what you're here to do and what you're being called to do in this moment to put your sparkly magic out there into the world. Knowing what you want, going out there and getting it, that is how you get out of the weight of other people's expectations. And that is what you are meant to do in this world. And you can still be loved. You can actually be loved like even more and in such a pure way because you love yourself. And when you love yourself first, like that is a loving act to do this for yourself, to really shine your light in the world. That is like true love, that self-love. <laughs> I laugh at myself because of how much I really don't like that phrase. <laughs> but that seriously loving yourself first is the way to get out of this tether. It's the way to cut the tether. And you're being called to do it. It's why somehow you have energetically matched to this podcast. It's why you're here right now listening to this message. It's why I'm sharing it is because somewhere in the world, there are people who need to hear it. And obviously from Bronnie Ware's research, there are plenty of people who need to hear this message about getting out of the weight of other people's expectations. And you do it by being kind to yourself first, loving yourself, being true to yourself, knowing who you are. Start there. It, it takes the tiniest, simplest first step. And maybe that first step is saying no to going to baby showers. <laughs> That's not my thing. I actually quite enjoy like silly baby showers and things like that. But what is the thing for you? What is one no that you can say that is a yes for yourself? Because that's how you're going to begin this like slow <laughs> method of getting down to what really, really matters to you. And that's what the world wants from you. The world doesn't want you to feel like you're living under the weight of other people's crap. No, 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 no. That's, I mean, if you actually had an honest conversation with your mom or with your boss or with anybody about this, if anybody knew that you were maybe feeling that way, that you were like living your life out of a place of guilt and worry and fear, like nobody wants that from you. But I remember when I first got into self-development, like my husband and I were having this conversation today. My primary feelings when I sat down and I wrote them down and I didn't have conscious awareness of this, my primary feelings were guilt and worry. And it's why you hear me say them so much. 
And then I realized judge me, like fear of being judged by other people was such a huge one for me. But that was causing me so much worry and so much guilt. Everything that I did, I felt like people were judging me. And that was what I realized. It was like, oh, I'm actually judging myself <laughs> because I'm not being true to me. So if you can identify that those are a couple of feelings for you, then that is a sign to get on the path to understanding what it is that truly lights you up, what really brings you joy, what is true to you, what is what is your authentic truth? What do you really care about? Do you even know? So many of us don't know. I didn't know. And that's why I was feeling so much worry and guilt because I didn't even know what my truth was. So I was living to other people's expectations and I thought that's what I was supposed to be doing and it felt like shit. It feels like shit. So if you're feeling that, you don't have to. <laughs> you don't have to be feeling that way. Um, and I will say I'm launching my program. The next wave of my program is happening. We are going to start the week of July 10th. If you are ready to do this work, my program Made for More might be for you. You can go to genlist.com slash made for more and go put in an application. If you put in an application, what I'm going to do is write back to you and I'm going to set up a free, totally free and like non-salesy 30-minute chat where I'm going to hear from you like where you're at and help you find a next step. That might be working with me. It might be totally something else. I've got lots of connections in this community and can help support people in going in the direction that's best for you. So if this conversation is calling on your heart, please, I do not want you to be living in guilt and worry and fear and all this codependency crap. It's just like, please do not be on your deathbed having this number one regret of the dying of living according to what you think other people want from you, because that's not the life that you're meant to be living. It's absolutely not. No, no, no. <laughs> yes, yes, yes to your sparkly unicorn magic. <laughs> well, I hope you took something beautiful away for yourself out of this episode. Maybe it's to do one kind thing for yourself this week. What is one kind yes that you can say for yourself. It might happen to be a no for somebody else. What is that thing? So go out there, think, sit down, take a moment for yourself, enjoy, hold your coffee and take a nice, beautiful sip of it and have just this thoughtful moment with yourself. Maybe go step outside, go for a quick technology-free walk and get out there and just think for yourself, what is one yes, one kind yes that I can say for myself this week? Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, I encourage you to share it with somebody else who might need to hear it. Maybe that's taking a little screenshot, sharing it on your Instagram stories or somewhere else. If you tag me on Facebook or Instagram, on Instagram, I'm at Untethered Jen. I will always, always reshare your post. You just keep shining your magical unicorn light out there for all to see. I'll see you next time. Bye.